Okay, on day two, this is our last topic. It's about what is controversial but still funny. What is funny for an audience, which may be controversial for some other audience. So, I think it's important for us to explore this subject, especially for where we are, because we seem to offend people a lot more and make them laugh a little less. That is the perception about stand-up comedians. So let's see what walking the line is. But before we do that, I want all of you all, each one of you all, to write an unpopular opinion in your books. And when we end this class, you all will be voicing that unpopular opinion. And it's very important for you to do that. So let's start with our first comic, one of my favorites, where he walks the line, Bill Burr. No, we have these huge battles. You know what the maddest she ever got at me was? One time she was watching this show, it was like a poor excuse for The View, and they started talking about domestic violence, right? For the nine millionth time this year, they're talking about domestic violence, just in case, you know, you didn't get the memo, you know? Evidently, you know, just some people didn't get it. It's not okay to slam your wife's head into the cupboard drawers <laughs> because she didn't dry the can opener off properly, you know? <laughs> it's gonna fucking rust, right? How do you not know not to do that shit? Do they really have to keep talking about it? Uh, who, who, it's like wife beaters watching for, oh, fuck, ah! Now I get it, up to Daisy, sweetheart, here we go. There you go, oh. So at the end of the hour, they come to the logical conclusion. They're like, there is no reason to hit a woman. There is no reason to hit a woman. And I was just like, really? I could give you like 17 right off the top of my head. You could wake me from a drunken stupor, I could still give you like nine. Dude, there's plenty of reasons to hit a woman. You just don't do it. But to sit there and suggest that there's no reason Dude, the level of ego behind that statement. What are you, levitating above the rest of us? You're never annoying? <laughs> Women, how many times have you thought about slapping your, your fucking guy in the head this week? Every day! There you go. <laughs> Every day. You didn't do it, right? Oh, dude, it drives me nuts. There's no reason. There's no reason. Really? No reason? How about this? You marry a girl, you fall in love, you buy her a house. You go to work every day, paying off the house. You come home one day, she's banging the next door neighbor, hands you divorce papers, you gotta move out, sleep on a futon, and still pay for that house that she's gonna stay in. No reason. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do it, but there's plenty of fucking reasons in that arc of a story. All right, that was a hypothetical. You want an actual story? I'll give you one. I'll give you one. All right, I fucked up my foot playing drums, trying to get my bass drum foot as fast as uh, John Bonham's, because I figure that's a good thing to focus on. 43 years of age, never married, no kids. I figure this, this is gonna lead me to the light, right? This, this, this is what I need to do. <laughs> so I don't know what I did. I, I felt like, after I played for like an hour, and afterwards I felt like a, literally like there was some midget stabbing me in the bottom of my foot, right? Like I had lightning coming out of the bottom of my foot. So I did the typical guy thing. I'm like, I'm not going to the hospital, I'll sleep it off. Be fine, right? Next morning I wake up, my foot's even worse. And I gotta walk my crazy dog. So I'm like, I can't do it, my foot's killing me. So I wake up my girl, go, sweetheart, sweetheart, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Can, can you walk the dog for me? Can you uh, just take the shift? You know, I'll do your afternoon shift. Can you just do me this solid? Can you do this for me? And she's just like, oh. You know, I had a late, late night last night. I'm tired, I have a big day, and I just go, fuck it. She goes, what do you mean, fuck it? It's like, why can't you just say no? Why do you always gotta like waterboard me with like a 20 minute explanation that eventually winds its way around to go fuck yourself? Just say no. So I'm just limping out of the room. Whatever, go back to bed. You got a big day, right? So now I'm like limping down the street. I got like Tourette's, fuck goddamn bullshit. Dog's walking next to me. I gotta admit, I got a little childish. I did, I got a little childish, you know? I was just thinking about my relationship. I'm like, this, this is the relationship I'm in? You're just gonna do whatever the hell you wanna do, right? And fuck me? 
Fine, I'm gonna do whatever the hell I wanna do. I feel like listening to my iPod on full blast, walking around the house. That's what I'm gonna do. So that's what I did. Turned it all the way up, and I just, I, my whole plan was just to walk by her like I didn't even know her. That was it, she came down the hall, I just ghosted her, just walked right past her. <laughs> just trying to piss her off, and I gotta tell you something, work like a charm, <laughs> work like a charm. Yeah, hung my coat up, turned around. By the time I turned around, she was already yelling at me. But the music was so loud, not only could I not hear her, it actually looked like she was singing the song that I was listening to. Oh, it's one of the highlights of the relationship. So I knew what she was saying. I was like, whatever, I don't want to talk about it. Leave me alone. I'm going on to the computer, right? So I limp over and I sit down, and unbeknownst to me, she's like, no, we're going to talk about this right now. Comes out, poo, and slaps the headphones off my head. I got a big, I got big ears, it fucking hurt. So I'm like, honey, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. Put the headphones back on. She comes right back up again. Poof, slaps them off a little harder. This time they spin halfway around my head. Caveman DNA starts coming up, talking through my teeth. Honey, leave me alone. Don't want to talk about it, right? Put them on third time. She comes up, poof, slaps them right across the room and I snap. I'm like, fine, you want to have the fight? Let's fucking have the fight. She's like, we will discuss this later when you calm down. Right there. I just wanted to roll her up on her yoga mat and stuff her behind the couch. Just leave her there till she got thirsty. Come on, let me out of here. I, I have a spin class. You've made your point. This is, this is ridiculous. No, that's the thing. Really is, that's the thing. I, I hate that saying there's no reason. Obviously, I'm not saying to hit a woman, you know? But saying there's no reason, I think that's crazy. When you say there's no reason, that kills any sort of examination as to how two people ended up at that, at that place. If you say there's no reason, whoo, you cut out the buildup, you just left with the act. How are you gonna solve it if you don't figure it out? Look how awkward it is in here right now. <laughs> I said you shouldn't hit a woman. I'm just saying, how come you can't ask questions? You can only ask questions about what the guy did. You can never ask about the woman. Why is that? Why is that? What is that? What does is, what is answer him right mean? What does that mean? Are you the idiot who got up halfway through the special during the bit and you're like walking around like I'm not fucking taping a special here? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Fucking had to ignore all of that and now you're gonna like yell out? And not only that, yell something that makes no fucking sense whatsoever? Answer him! Answer him! Every fucking special I do, there's always one. <laughs> always, right down the fucking middle. Talking about hitting women, sweetheart. And I think you just added another reason. Jesus fucking Christ. I love this. I'm not even in a relationship with her, and she's fucking nagging me. <laughs> fucking unbelievable. <laughs> Look, I understand hitting a woman's a bad thing, okay? Well, how come you can't fucking ask questions? I just don't understand. Like, if I get bit by a rattlesnake, wouldn't you guys have some questions? All right? How did it happen? Did you not see it? Were you fucking with it? How did this snake get so mad? It almost killed you. Firemen put out a fire. They don't just drive away afterwards. They sift through the debris. How did it start? Here's an oily rag. Right? Look, I realize I'm coming off pretty ignorant right about now. I realize that. Let me extend an olive branch then, okay? I realize that there's some animal guys out there, okay? Horrible guys, you know, have a rough day at the factory, come home, tune a casserole, and just start swinging, all right? <laughs> I'm not trying to say that those people don't exist. I realize they exist, they should be buried underneath the prison, okay? So if I can admit that, ladies, can you at least admit that every ass kicking doesn't just fall out of the fucking sky? <laughs> really? Even hockey has two minutes for instigating, right? <laughs> they understand that some back and forth happened before that shit, you know? You know what it is? It's every case is handled like that Rihanna one, where they just say, the guy's a piece of shit, fuck this guy, blah, 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 send him to jail, and then they never ask anything about that. You know, I'm not saying he should have done it, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying, dude, in your heart of hearts, 
What do you think was going down before that happened? You think she was just sitting there going, oh my God, Baston Robbins, you want to get some ice cream? He fucking, ah, fucking. You know? What do you think? Maybe they were having some epic end of the relationship fight and some crazy shit was being said. Maybe she was screaming in his ear some crazy female shit like, oh, fuck all your friends, I don't give a fuck. Maybe that's why I sell more albums than you, motherfucker. Right? To be fair, she could have just been sitting there going, I need a tissue, do you keep those in the glove box? Oh my God, I'll bring my own, I'll bring my own. <laughs> now fuck that, because you know what it is? They never address how women argue, which I think is a core of a lot of that shit. You know, and I gotta tell you something, man. Like, I never knew how women argued, but after 20 years of losing every significant battle <laughs> in a relationship, I finally figured out how they argued. And I'm gonna tell you something. I'm starting to turn this franchise around. <laughs> I have begun a winning tradition. This is how they argue, as far as I can tell. All right, if they're right, they argue the point. And they stay on point and make sure you stay on point until you're down on your knees apologizing, begging for forgiveness. All right? No problem with that. Totally respect it. But here's the thing. If they're wrong, they go rogue. They go off-road. They start thinking of shit you're sensitive about. Maybe you don't get along with your dad. And in their head, they just start concocting this evil statement. Totally designed. This desperate Hail Mary attempt to make you so fucking mad, you just call him a cunt what it is and cunt trumps all the bullshit they did to start the argument now it's not about that well that's no reason to call me a cunt and then that's it you're in this room now right <laughs> my girl knows my big thing is my big fear in life is to be that dude who grows old you know grows old alone has like that basement apartment just screaming up at the younger couple turn it down <laughs> that isn't music so I noticed that anytime she was losing a fight, I don't know what she'd just be like, well, that's why you're just gonna grow old and be alone. Then I'd, I'd lose my shit. The next thing you know, I'm in the kitchen washing dishes for the ninth fucking time in a row. This is what the argument was about. I was so right, what happened? So if you learn anything from my ignorance tonight, just know this, next time you're in a battle with your beautiful woman, your, your wife, girlfriend, whatever, and they start out of nowhere, Okay, you're winning and they just start saying that crazy shit out of nowhere. Just know in that moment you've won the fight, okay? All right, don't get mad. Bob and weave, slip all of that shit. Maybe because yeah, you got a little dick, just let that slide. Stay in the pocket of the argument. Okay, it's over. The argument is over, you've won. Just take a knee and run out the clock, all right? Yes, lean on the ropes, let them punch themselves out. And then in the end, you throw this psychology right back at them. Well, maybe we should discuss it later when you calm down. <laughs> ah, and they won't hook up with you for a couple of days. Who cares? Who cares? You rub one out. <laughs> rub one out like a man. It's the champagne of victory. So this was Bill were towing the line. We can discuss this bit. So I just thought that... Um of course, being a feminist and having very close friends go through domestic violence. I particularly thought that I think we all live in very different quarters, right? So yeah. I relate to what he's saying mm -hmm. from the victim point of view, but I also relate to him as a stand-up comedian. And I cannot but be in awe of him taking this for his courage for, to say that this is a topic. And also as somebody who has empathy, understands that, you know, even men go through uh, or mm. anybody who also is blamed for something that they have not done is going go, gone through it. So I feel that we all live in different layers. Yep. And you know, which layer, which what is the setting, hence it matters a lot. Secondly, I think because Bill Burr, you know him to be a good guy all throughout. He's been such an empath throughout. When he picks up this topic, I felt that, you know, it just felt actually yeah you know sometimes you know uh, women do get that advantage some women get that advantage to kind of you know uh, you know just take the high moral ground the words also he used like high moral ground which any human being can take so he right. just felt very very uh, what you call um, genuine so and honest genuine and honest and it just felt like you know he's doing that also to just you know unlock that inside you that part mm. of empathy where you can actually you can grow as a person and not just run with a propaganda, run with a campaign. Yeah. So I, I love that instigation. And I think on the gender justice debate, 
every person who is born with the identity of the oppressor may be stupid if he disagrees with the statistics of who is doing the violence but at the same time i don't know how guilt works because having guilt for any thing that you did not want whether it's your gender your father's money your caste your class your birth country your religion anything if you have a lot of guilt towards that and if you think your existence is only oppressive it will be very difficult for you to do comedy uh, the way he goes around the topic i feel uh, he's just trying to give another perspective it's not like he's trying to tell that it's okay to beat a wife or like anything that people don't get beat up or whatever and he keeps on justifying that uh, as well uh, throughout his bit so i i don't feel like even if someone has had an experience or whatever they okay it might be a little sensitive for them but for other people i don't think it they need to be sheltered from the fact that uh this these things exist or such statistics exist they can still uh, see the thing is that he is not projecting a perspective of a group he is not saying men are always being <laughs> that is not where he is coming from he is just saying this is one side of the argument and if you blankly blatantly just ignore the other side there's never going to be a conversation so that's what i'm saying so in this case since he is having this conversation i think that's better than not having a conversation at all 100% it is better but it may not see a person who has had a lived experience it takes a lot for them to be rational towards a comedian who is looking at their lived experience as a comedy premise where he is making money of it now that's where the complication comes the people who have an issue with dev shapel they can list down lived experiences of them and they can counter it to what dev shapel is saying and their lived experience also has value what dev shapel is saying also has value but thing is that the person who has gone through their lived experience and dev shapel is talking about his perspective those people didn't have to meet if they didn't have to manufacture outrage they had no meeting ground it was not like dev shapel said this at a rally for the lgbtq community and their upliftment he said it in his comedy special and if you disagree with it it's easy to say don't watch it i'm saying you must have a conversation about it but he is not here to undermine your lived experience and because you had a lived experience it is very difficult to have a sense of humor about it i agree to that also my mother is a cancer survivor someone may have an impolite joke on cancer as a comedian i may not laugh but my lived experience cannot be his guilt while cracking a joke he must crack a joke i must have a lived experience i may disagree with his joke and protest against the joke by not laughing at the joke but there is nothing else i have to do what is the other thing left to do i have showed my sign of protest and the best sign of protest actually the sign of protest to which every comedian responds to is an audience not laughing and if you see in this show also bill burr says that's gotten very quiet now you guys are not on board what a comedian wants is an outpouring of advice what a bad joke deserves is only non laughter that is enough there's nothing else needed my ideologies are a bit different than this so should i still perform a joke like this or uh, just because it's good or uh, should i just keep your quiet? ideology is your world view i no, don't but the joke is good but it wouldn't come to you if the joke is good and if it's against your ideology it would not make you laugh so your ideology is floating if you are saying the joke is good that means your ideology is not that 
if the joke has made you laugh that means you and the joke don't have an ideological difference and if the joke has not made you laugh then it won't make your audience laugh because you have to pretend like it made you laugh at some point right you can't deliver a joke that did not even make you laugh that's at starting of being a stand up comedian you only present jokes that make you laugh when we are you know towing the line do we build up to the question or do we do we build up to the joke or do we just spring it onto the audience every comedian has a different style of doing it depending on the currency and the socio bracket that the people are sitting in front of you are and what are what is an unpopular opinion to them what is the context that they have to you will make you decide how to go up to them with the premise like bill were he started the premise not by saying there are many reasons to hate a women no he started the premise by saying are you seriously telling me that there's no reason to hate a woman there are two different starts there's one where he is painting a picture of a argument that he's had and the other start that i gave you is what you suggested should you just throw away the unpopular opinion and then try to justify it those are two different scenarios and those scenarios are very different from each other because they are depending on the context the audience has towards you the context they have towards the show who have they perceived you as what are you going to say to them how are you going to justify it what is it going to mean so there are many there are many things that go into just walking the line yeah we'll play another one okay one of my favorite comedians on a joke that is uh, i think very uncomfortable uh, in the context that he is at a time he does it and uh, in my opinion nobody has been able to crack a better joke on that scenario till date i think this video is about 13 years old but yeah this is worth discussing louis ck and i really you know i jerk off way too much and it upsets me i don't know why <laughs> Maybe it's because it's so selfish. I don't know what it is, but I know it's bad. I know I'm hurting somebody somewhere. There's something wrong with it. Like I was thinking the other day that you can figure out how bad a person you are by how soon after September 11th you masturbated, like how long you waited. <laughs> And for me, it was between the two buildings going down. So I have a feeling that. I had to do it. I had to. Otherwise, they win. That's the way I was looking at it at the time. It was a strange time for all of us. Okay just very quickly uh, we of course uh, condemn and i do condemn uh, the person that he turned out to be but that doesn't mean we as students of comedy have to stop learning from what he did because we are not adding to his currency we are not adding to his wealth we are not adding to his clout we are taking something from him free of cost and using it for our benefit so we are putting him at a loss so there is nothing wrong in doing that as per my opinion some people may have a different opinion i respect that but that is the best 911 joke i've heard while walking the line for the pure reason that it makes the audience laugh and then he says the two most important lines which are so honest for me it was between the two building that's how i look at it otherwise they win that was a very crucial point of that joke and then he says the line that was a strange time that was a weird time for all of us so we all dealt with it differently and that sort of gives ck the genuineness where he throws the most genius line about 911 a terrorist tragedy that the country he is performing in has gone through it was a weird time for everybody and we all dealt with it differently it's very powerful line he just says it like he's throwing away but that gives the bit the sort of backbone for it to walk the line in entirety very properly yeah we can discuss this really small joke which walks the line till now i feel it's one of the best 
I would call it the best 9/11 jokes by an American, which is not on the tragedy, which is not on the people, which is not on the terrorist. It's on masturbation. Like, who would have thought of that mind mapping? So, yeah, we can discuss this. Any questions? If no questions, then you all are just waiting to read out your unpopular opinions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it. So, uh the yeah. foreign comedians have the liberty to walk on that line. Right. And in India, we could be 10 kilometers away from the line and we still get into trouble. Right. How do we navigate through that if we Yeah, that's I'll tell you that part when you all read out your unpopular thoughts. Okay. Okay. Because I want to tell you how you have been considerate or inconsiderate with your unpopular view. We don't want to offend people. It is not a prerogative. Not online, not offline. I don't want anyone to hate me. Life is far better. Just imagine with my opinions and Kenny Sebastian's life, it would be best. <laughs> but That can't happen, but I must justify that my intention is not to hurt people. My intention is to communicate with people with my worldview who agree with me, who understand me, who are in a similar circumstance, who are doing something little out of the box, entertain them. My view is not to hurt anybody, not intentionally. But sometimes it happens. And it is okay if it happens, but your intentions of why your unpopular opinion needs to be out there matters more than your unpopular opinion. And hence I told you all to write your unpopular opinions. And uh, if anyone does not have any questions, you have a question, go for it. Yeah, so I had a dilemma right now while writing my unpopular opin opinion, something similar to what you said that when I was writing my opinion, I was very confused about whether at the end of the day, it's my opinion. And yeah. if I'm performing that, is my target to persuade the audience that uh, to make them agree to my opinion or is it just to just put it out onto the world for Correct. them to judge if it's right or wrong? Yeah. Or also at the end, uh, to till what extent should I justify my opinion? Because if I'm... See, all of this is tricks to not tell me your unpopular opinion. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say my opinion, for sure. Tell me the opinion yeah. and we'll navigate through it. Yeah. It's your opinion. You believe yeah. in it? Yeah. However unpopular it is, if it is very unpopular, we will not put it on camera. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> the editor is my friend. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just tell me what the unpopular opinion is and let me just tell you, if there is a way to make it less unpopular, that's about it. Because walking the line in India is tough. Most of the people who see you don't even know that it is stand-up comedy. Most of the people who see you think that you are talking directly to them. It's, that's why they get offended. So we have to come to a mid-ground, offend lesser, make them laugh more. And we will be able to turn it around. Today in India, stand-up happens in maybe 30 places, 35 places. But I think with comedy being done in local languages and also languages of uh, mass communication throughout the country, we may be able to establish comedy in the next maybe 15 years to about 105 to 110 cities. That means if a comic towards the entire country, he will take one year to finish his tour. That's the goal plan because there are only 110 Friday, Saturday, Sundays in the year. Not more than that. So yeah, we can discuss. I believe that in comedy specifically that, you know, everything is fair as long as you are able to justify. And uh, I would say, um, in a way, be able to kind of explain your position and let it be. I don't think um, anyone should be offended, but that's different from time. So that's part A of it. And then part B is basically, as a comedian who is starting off, right, for any of us, so 
do we need to wait until we are relevant until we can start touching on these unpopular opinions or is it something that you know people can start from the get go you are asking the wrong guy i was only relevant because i had a unpopular opinion <laughs> So <clears throat> I don't think see this is the conundrum I meet a lot of comedians and they say that we agree with you we understand we actually have a more harsh opinion than you also but let us first buy a father a house <laughs> buy our mothers a car get our sisters married get our kids into a good school and then we will give our unpopular opinion and i've been here 8 years and all of that has also happened for a few comedians who told me this 8 years ago but i've still not figured out what their unpopular opinion is <laughs> see being a outcast once you are relevant is very difficult but to be an outcast from the beginning is slightly easier and seeing all the people who said that in 10 years i will do this and in 10 years i will be saying i have not seen them say anything actually i've seen the reverse i saw them more themselves and less catering to people than they are right now so cushions are there to make you comfortable cushions are not there saying ki i i'll be in the most comfortable position and i'll say the most uncomfortable thing that may not happen because you have put the cushion there only to comfort you so it's all about being true to yourself i don't think you can plan it like a corporate thing that when i'm a vp then i'll wear pointed shoes <laughs> it doesn't work like this it's a whole different arrangement what what we have learned at least in the last one year at, by, by seeing is that in india you don't even need to have an opinion to offend people yeah you say a certain word in your set and yeah. that's it that is good enough yeah. for goons to actually land up at your place yeah. where you're performing so it is not even about buying your mom a car or Correct, a, a ring or whatever so, so let's go to the first part then? of the question can so, you repeat the first part of yeah, the question yeah so it's not you've not even voiced an opinion in some cases so might as well actually, voice an opinion if you're going to have goons come to your house <laughs> might as well have a opinion or not touch those topics at all that is your call but if i mean it's about living and dying i mean wo, that is totally <laughs> your call but the first part of your question is sometimes you don't in, need to have an opinion okay. huh. and huh. goons huh. turn up at your house so i'm saying goons will turn up at your house at some point because they are unemployed huh. how much time can they spend with their families <laughs> they will turn up at your house so might as well have the opinion because goons are can turn up on rahul subramaniam's house because he cracked a joke on dj's i can promise you if i said something about dj's or bullet owners or something like that they would not bother because i've gone above them anyway <laughs> and they have not been able to disturb my peace so what choice do dj's or bullet owners or someone else have so it is about that clarity um between online and offline right i for some reason i feel like when you are doing it offline and you have people in front of you they see a part of your personality they see the start and the end of it and so they more engage with you and give you the opportunity to express your views clearly whereas in online formats they can just pick up that 10 second mean like how dare you say that so is there yeah. something like you know if i don't know not like you know do it offline first before you try and go online or anything like that that you i mean <clears throat> see i am here to say just that if you asking me for see it's an advice so my advice is whatever is working offline may be of some trouble online sometimes may be of a lot of trouble online but whatever doesn't work offline will be 10 times the trouble online so if it is working offline and if you get a laugh there i support your freedom to put it online because the context of the people who laughed at it is served i may not agree with your opinion but that's not protecting your freedom to put as i protecting your freedom to put it up is not agreeing with you but still agreeing with you to put it up 
that's what if a live audience is laughing that's enough reason for that to exist online ha huh, it may be a dumb call in the long run and you may face a lot of problems for it but in my personal opinion the fact that it has built context character and created laughter for an audience who has paid to watch comedy that's enough reason to put it online so which side do we start with left or right left okay actually that would be you guys because <laughs> actually <laughs> more people on the left are here <laughs> this is just my left <laughs> which act has not mattered from day 1 <laughs> my left is now in congress <laughs> whatever is left of the left will eventually be in congress <laughs> by i don't mean left of left by i mean what was left over of the left <laughs> chalo let's start from here okay um fair enough uh, my opinion in, is on the concept of opinions itself in the sense that uh, my opinion is ki if we are more vocal about our opinions the more confirmist or prejudiced we become okay having an opinion as a person will make you more prejudice towards what though towards you, what your opinion and what your belief system is made of yeah we'll become a, a bigger confirmist if we vocalize our opinion and validate or else even engage it with other people very safe on popular opinion you will not land into any trouble with it okay uh my unpopular opinion is uh, animal love nowadays it is either over hyped or maybe it has gone too far so because aaj ki date mein hum log kutton ko bachcho ke jaise treat kar rahe hain aur bachcho ko kutton ke jaise treat kar rahe hain okay you can extend your unpopular opinion and you can take it to when this whole festival happens in china where they kind of killing dogs killing dogs everybody makes a noise about it on facebook I'm fine with it. That would be a very unpopular opinion. <laughs> But I agree with your justific animal love has gone too far. People are video calling their dogs much more than their lovers. So, yeah, you can justify that opinion. That's an unpopular opinion that has scope. Yeah, pass the mic. So, my unpopular opinion is uh, monogamy is unnatural. Oh. that was someone's unpopular opinion 1965 <laughs> all right i've got he moved. was then rajneesh professor of philosophy in jabalpur <laughs> which is an unpopular place so okay monom- monogamy are, is yeah. but that is scientifically proven so my unpopular opinion on your unpopular opinion is that monogamy has been undermined a lot these days by millennials they don't know the plus of monogamous relationships that would be an unpopular opinion because what you are if your unpopular opinion is backed by science then it's not an unpopular opinion if your unpopular opinion is backed by statistics then it's not an unpopular opinion then it's an opinion so yeah so these are the crux of getting to an unpopular opinion next <laughs> his opinion is that he is going to tell his opinion later. <laughs> Are you going to tell it in my ear? <laughs> okay, next, just pass it to him. My opinion is, uh, I feel parents don't deserve as much respect as people usually give them, <laughs> and I think they're ir- irrelevant in today's world. That's. an unpopular opinion but that has to be backed with what goes wrong in parenting so your unpopular opinion comes from your personal experience that's pretty evident but that needs to be backed by what justifies your unpopular opinion in a funny way so yeah it's a good unpopular opinion that parents are over respected I want to see that Olympian who goes and takes a medal and then doesn't thank his mother and father. Yeah. 
it will happen don't worry <laughs> <laughs> let's move on my unpopular opinion is on food like it's not yeah. like very heavy uh it's that <laughs> it's not very heavy and it's on food yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is uh, it service charge good. <laughs> uh, service charge is uh, you know uh, kk lunga scam uh, huh. yeah service charge is like uh, you know ultimate kk lunga scam this is a popular opinion no 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 this is a brahmanical view on the bill <laughs> <laughs> no i, I so i don't agree with this <laughs> how can you debate service charge <laughs> maybe that's what uh, you know i've seen be abroad <laughs> you will be made to feel like a criminal if you don't tip well these people are very decent <laughs> tipping is different tipping is different tipping is, but service but charge how, goes to the tip evolved. that's how it, it has evolved because people were not tipping because they were like you confused about what is the right amount yeah, yeah but that that's why it's a scam because if you try doing that like yeah. there's this whole process and they'll come i think it's a popular opinion popular. Yes. it's not an unpopular opinion because your opinion is based on questioning uh, the marginalized community and your popular opinion unpopular opinion is not based on questioning something which is not been questioned before right how many like every person in india says हमारे टैक्स के पैसों से चल रहा है इंडिया वाइल नॉट रियलाइजिंग के टैक्स तो सबको ही भरता है एंड पेइंग टैक्स इन दिस कंट्री फॉरगेट सर्विस चार्ज इवन पेइंग इनकम टैक्स इन अ कंट्री लाइक इंडिया स्टेटिस्टिकली इट्स अ प्रिवलेज इफ यू पे इनकम टैक्स यू आर प्रिवलेज दैट्स द एंड ऑफ द स्टोरी दर इज नथिंग बियॉन्ड दैट टू डिस्कस बिकॉज स्टेटिस्टिकली पीपल से द वन परसेंट इज रनिंग द हंड्रेड परसेंट दैट इज बुल शिट वी स्पेंड मोर मनी कलेक्टिंग income tax then the income tax that comes in the people who are running the show are people who are paying indirect taxes and this has been proved through economics of 99 2004 2009 2014 2019 2014, and this will be true in 24 29 and 34 so what your service charge you think is doing welfare it's like an uncle sitting at home and saying हमारे बच्चों से जे एन यू पढ़ रहे हैं बच्चे जे एन यू में पढ़ रहे हैं कुछ अच्छा ही बोल देते हैं इट्स एन इक्व एलेंट ऑफ दैट एंड हेंस इट्स कैन बी अ कॉमेडी सेट इट कैन बी शेयर इट कैन बी वैल्यूड बट इट्स नॉट एन अनपॉपुलर ओपिनियन सो या यू कैन पास इट आई होप समन एज एन अनपॉपुलर ओपिनियन विद कुनाल कामरा इज नॉट फनी ओके लेट्स गो या एक्चुअली इट्स नॉट एन ओपिनियन बट इट्स समथिंग आई like like you know those what if fantasies which kudesh like what i would yeah. want to do so yeah uh using a matchstick to burn down the slum below my building so without the slum my property price will rise so that's I, okay it's very it's an un, i can't think you can justify this opinion unless you are from the slum <laughs> and you want to burn the building <laughs> and then you can justify this opinion but yeah what's yours Uh, people who have retired stop being stakeholders in the economy because उन्होंने तो अपना पैसा बना लिया yeah. hence they should not be allowed to vote yeah that is actually in one of my sets also it's great that you can start voting at a certain age but it's pathetic that you cannot stop voting after you are who the fuck are you voting for you don't even know if you are here for 5 years why do you care if someone else is going to come and go so yeah this is an unpopular opinion difficult to justify but it will happen it's there yeah one more unpopular opinion sure some people don't even have one popular <laughs> one unpopular opinion you have to go for it not making babies needs to be seriously incentivized not making babies need like to in carbon be footprints maybe seriously massive saving in the carbon footprint i can see where this is going but i can say one side will have a huge problem with it <laughs> because the reply will of this will be my reason 
reason for saying this is because it's seen too much as a milestone in Indian culture at least and I don't mean anything yeah that, that, is the, that is the problem that is the problem why is it zero why is it not yeah 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 why is it not yeah yeah I know exactly the group which will take this unpopular opinion <laughs> very seriously <laughs> but yeah it's an unpopular opinion babies add to carbon footprint yes next that was duck stanhope's opinion also so my opinion is that riots should be legal like if there are two sides that are willing to fight they should be allowed to fight if two sides want to fight yeah they should be given given space to fight given space so to fight so that it's peaceful for everyone else two sides that want to fight with each other must be given a designated space to be fight to be for probably on a sunday so that probably on a sunday <laughs> so yeah, your unpopular opinion will be very tough to justify because one side that wants to fight has a lot of utility which is provided to fight and the other side that wants to fight has re been reacting to one side wanting to fight so the agenda and the fight would be boring to watch if one fight is like one person is coming with a soda bottle saying i want to fight with you and the other person has a assault rifle where he just shoots and says <laughs> done next <laughs> so but it's an uh, unpopular opinion totally to be explored that if two people who believe that we can achieve something from rioting must be allowed to riot together so yeah unpopular opinion but can be justified very good you shall write it down for when you are able to voice that opinion Uh, so I have penned down few. So I'll start with the first one. Sure. Uh, the best and the only way to live is naked. Okay. Justify it. There is no need of clothes. For? Uh, just to present your religious identity. Or religious identity. identity. Wearing a kurta. Or a. Listen, I am wearing my religious identity. Why does it? I have a problem. I don't get it. Okay, unpopular opinion: being naked solves a lot of problems in society. There are no shopping malls, no comparisons. Yeah, if you could build an island where people did not wear clothes, hmm. it would make a lot of sense. But in society, <laughs> it would be problematic. But an unpopular opinion that can be explored, where you are saying nobody should buy clothes, because why are you buying it? Yeah. and the next if one. you are fit why are you buying it <laughs> if you are fat why are you buying it the <laughs> logic applies both ways okay i get the unpopular opinion and the next is um, education is not just a degree certificate that's a very okay and that you, every person who teaches is saying <laughs> so it's not an unpopular opinion uh urine is expensive than the milk urine is cow urine is expensive than the milk No, that is also not an unpopular opinion. Yeah, that's it. So you had one very good unpopular opinion about living naked, and you are saying it. <laughs> Who's confident of of his naked self? <laughs> He's saying, "I've got this. <laughs> I'm okay to live naked." Yeah, go for it. Okay, uh, my unpopular opinion is we should drop the save the tiger mission. Why? Because the only justification I have got till now is that. if we don't save tiger our future generation will not be able to see tigers mm -hmm. but i am uh, 25 years now i haven't seen a tiger yeah. 10 out of 10 <laughs> don't save the tiger because our future generation will not be able to see the tiger and you are like i am 25 <laughs> while there are tigers i have not seen a tiger So why should we show it to other people? Actually, we must stop saving the tiger as soon as you see the tiger. <laughs> What is the point of saving tigers after you've seen it? I saw a tiger; he was looking majestic, and then I was like, "That's it. Let's kill him. <laughs> the last tiger on earth." <laughs> Amazing, unpopular opinion. You have others? No. That's But yeah, you should work on unpopular opinions. <laughs> like I. uh it came from like uh let's declare cow the national animal but then i went to this no 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 <laughs> what is your problem the joke works better with tiger 
And I'm sure you've seen a cow. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> The, I don't like people just being anti-Hindu. <laughs> I'm very pro-Hindu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my unpopular opinion is there are benefits of suicide. Okay. And yeah. Yeah, there are. Yeah. And then I justify it in a way that I have not done So who's benefiting out of you not committing suicide? Maybe my parents or. <laughs> You can't be maybe in that premise. <laughs> there are benefits of suicide is an unpopular opinion, but you have to justify it and back it with something very solid. Yeah, that is what I am planning for a set about. Huh, but the unpopular opinion has to be backed with the rationale before the opinion. Okay. For example, I think if you are going to commit suicide, don't do it in the end of the month. Yeah. Think about your landlord. There's no notice. There's no next month's rent. He can't even ask it. That's maybe an unpopular opinion. So that's what unpopular yeah, opinion. Yeah, I have written some things about it. Yeah. So yeah. you have to justify it further. Yeah. Next. So my unpopular opinion is there should be a psychological test you have to pass before you can have kids. Psychological test you have to pass before you can. Have. Very good very good and you can prepare the psychological test it can have jokes about parenting yeah good unpopular opinion which will go through so countries which are political enemies of each other like india pakistan north korea south korea they should not have sporting events between them uh -huh. because if art promotes like a feeling of community and togetherness but sport only creates like more rivalry and more hatred we mm. think of it as harmless, but you see any India-Pakistan match coverage, yeah. it's always promoting Yeah, but this hatred. is an empathetic opinion towards people who are Muslim. When India wins or loses, they get abused. No, not India, India Muslims. Or in Pakistan, when people are Hindus or Sindhis, a lot of my extended relatives must be there because a part of my family moved here. So they are subjugated to abuse or derogatory remarks or some sort of interference in their normal life. Because it is not like they are playing to come together. They are playing to win. Yeah. And one wins, one loses. Whoever wins, whoever loses, the minority of that fraction in this country or that country is always subjugated. So this is a good opinion, but it's not unpopular. It's a good opinion to write a set on also. I think there should be no India Pakistan matches is a good it's an unpopularish opinion but not unpopular enough I mean I, it was not even about the minorities just that if you want to prevent war and if you are eventually promoting togetherness then sport doesn't do that people think that sport unites sport doesn't unite I think sport creates more rivalry and sport hatred. sport divides yeah that's what so uh, I think that opinion can be about like starting with the unpopular opinion of we should not play cricket with them. Not because I, but because I feel playing with them makes us do these things which are dividing us further than uniting us. Also, not countries which are at war, who cannot fight war, find the surrogate way to fight each other through cricket and football and all of these things, which are e not a war, but it is as toxic for those people who come from these communities, who are living in another settlement. So you can explore that idea also. Yeah, ma'am. So I've just written down that uh, women need to adjust and married women should adjust. But I feel that brave is better than frozen. So be brave, don't adjust. So you're saying don't marry. But if you marry... Don't marry, don't adjust. Because if you keep adjusting, that means you are going to freeze. So don't marry... I, I don't know, I just wrote these lines. It's unpopular enough for all sides. <laughs> so you're saying if you marry, you have to adjust. Because that's the notion that, you know, they say, first of all, that women, they, as girls, need to adjust. So your unpopular opinion may be, once you get married, make people adjust to you. <sighs> like, instead of you saying that these are my new parents, they must come and tell you, hey, you are a new child. You want us to buy you a candy floss. <laughs> Can we take you out for trekking? So like that. 
So maybe there is something there where you are saying, if you get married, make sure you don't adjust. Yes. Yeah. Be brave and don't adjust. Be brave is not important. Okay. If you are getting married, don't adjust. Make them adjust. Okay. So that kind of turns the whole premise around to people who are married and people are adjusting to them being married. So that would be that would be something new. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, so my unpopular opinion is that I think that vada pav is an overrated food. Okay. Uh, uh, I have friends in the MNS, so I'm going home. <laughs> 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 so unless you are very hungry or on short of money huh. um, end of the day it's just potato ka sabzi fried in basin <laughs> so it's just the chutney doing the work uh, like if you explore out <laughs> correct so this is a good unpopular opinion which is very geographically staccato okay. in the state of Maharashtra okay. in a comedy club in Mumbai okay. it's not an unpopular opinion for a Delhi person for someone in Haryana they anyway don't like vada pav when they come to my house, because I'm a vada pav connoisseur. Oh. <laughs> so I get them Kirti College vada pav to impress them. And then they are impressed. <laughs> but I have to do that work <laughs> to get them on board with vada pav. But when I'm outside the state, they are all criticizing vada pav. So it's an unpopular opinion just geographically here. Yeah. Next. Freedom of speech should be... Absolute. No holds part. So your unpopular opinion is the American constitution which has been in practice for 300 years. <laughs> Contempt of court, defamation should not be a thing. Okay, that is not there in America. <laughs> so your unpopular opinion has to be, again, geographically your unpopular opinion is unpopular. But universally, it's there. Next. Uh, I have two. One which is more universal. Okay. What, yeah. Um, Mandir, church, uh, mosque, sab ban kar do. Mm -hmm. There is no point to having them because uh, if you can't have faith in the people around you, what is the point of having faith in imaginary figures that yeah. existed a long time ago? Yeah. Javed Akhtar School of <laughs> <laughs> Religious Science. <laughs> Javed Akhtar got Richard Dawkins Award. You'll get Farhan Akhtar Award. <laughs> I don't think it's an unpopular opinion, but yeah, let's move. What was your second opinion? Even shittier. Okay, Haan. pass. <laughs> Beef legal on chahiye. Yeah. Weed legal on chahiye? Beef. Beef? No, no, no. I can't say that. I'm a pure vegetarian anyway. What I've got to do with this argument. Yeah, so my unpopular opinion is uh, you cannot determine whether you're inclusive about a certain part of a society by the proper pronoun you use for them. I don't want to ask someone what your name is and what do you pronoun se bula. Hmm. That shouldn't be like a thing. So uh, in today's time, like that is like one of the things you, you should be like a proper pronoun should be used for the identity you perceive to uh, like be recognized as. So some people identifying their gender itself is the re revolution that they have. It's like we may criticize marriage, we may criticize having kids, but for someone who has fought a socio-economic war to achieve the basic freedom that we have been given on a platter and we are avoiding. So for them, that is the revolution to be married, to have a kid. No, so but they like are being, the once again, no, I'll no, just sorry, complete sorry, sorry, that. Sorry. So they are being revolutionary in the act, which we may feel is mundane. So like, I have no need to identify my gender. It is pretty obvious what my gender is. But for someone coming to the identification of what they are and accumulating it to their gender itself is revolutionary. So they may have a certain sort of way that they want to be acknowledged so that there is more awareness. But sometimes what happens is they clog uh, the people who cannot comprehend so badly that they get like what vegans do. If I meet a vegan at the party, I leave. <laughs> There's no point. So there is that divide in this pronoun debate and this is an unusual premise, it's an unpopular opinion, you can go somewhere with it. But be always empathetic to the fact that for someone exploring their gender identity in itself is a revolution. So it's an unpopular opinion, just be a little empathetic and mindful and you can make it work in a comedy premise, hopefully. Yeah. 
man in popular opinion is that i think new comics should be charged very less to none for open mics rather than popular comics this is not an unpopular opinion <laughs> <laughs> i'm boycotted an open mic in 2016 for this <laughs> you are 5 years late to the revolution <laughs> they were charging 300 rupees i said balls i'll not pay <laughs> but yeah come to the op- opinion further Just you are saying settled comic should be charged more yeah, to like perform at an open mic than us <laughs> then you all i totally agree with that totally agree with that. and that's the best way to not have these so called settled comics at your open mics <laughs> It's not like they. It's not like they talk to you. They interact with you. They say hi, hello, nothing. <laughs> so let's charge them a little more. Yeah. And let's charge you lesser. So I am on board with the not charging the open mic person. But see, India by and large as a country, we are trained to look through loopholes. Like one person wanted to come for this workshop because. he's like you charge 1000 rupees for a ticket and i only get to see you 1 hour 15 minutes but now i'll get to see you for 9 hours which is 500 rupees an hour now i have to restrict this person's entry because he has no interest in learning comedy and i have no interest in talking to him because he is not here to do or learn stand up so sometimes it is that that a comic is charged not for making money of the comic just to derive their interest like i could have kept a free workshop 180 people would have showed up but the fact is that i have to put a barrier so that i am talking to people who are serious about comedy and not people who are doing it in a way which is just you know just as their hobby or whatever just to get that one profile picture and then so hence some barriers and some rules are set but yeah i'm against paying to perform and i hope i never see a time in my life where i have to pay to perform and you must fight that battle when you are good enough and when you don't have to pay the first time you get a gig which is paying you that's a good time to stop and not pay to perform so if somebody has identified you and said that you should not pay i should pay you then you should not pay anyone else and that i followed that rule it worked out yeah next uh my unpopular opinion is i think all iit and i am should burn down by the order of currently ruling government all iit and i am should be burned down by the order of currently ruling government by the order of the currently ruling government currently ruling government all iit iim should be burned down as per order of the but what do we do with the iitians and iim people <laughs> they'll gain more power because the institution doesn't even exist anymore they'll be the last set of iitians and iims <laughs> they would fuck the world beyond repair <laughs> i would see the reaction of people who are kind of bugged of current ruling party who ah, would say burn down jnu and amu <laughs> okay i get the point unpopular opinion can be justified it will be really funny but don't use very violent words like burn down okay they are very violent in action okay. so when you have an unpopular opinion you should not be provoking violence i think if from tomorrow we put a shut down on all the iit and iims where would the kids go what would they do what would their lives be what would the eighth standard person who is not learning his third language as english but he is learning c++ what would he be doing on byjus so it is an interesting premise but don't use violent words like burn down because they have very different connotation they are more authoritative as a comedian you have to always appear with your ideas as the underdog not an authoritative figure who says burn down shut down rule out throw out kick them hit them It, because these are actions to be done by people in drama and fiction it's not our job okay yeah uh i think all gurus cult leaders and I'll tell you how you should. Next one, next one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
sorry 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 ma'am go for it all of them uh, who who basically are like i'll tell you how you should live your life they should all go to jail mm. uh, because enlightenment is not a thing and it should not even be a word great premise one more uh, uh, awardee of uh, farhan akhtar <laughs> farhan akhtar award for uh, rational thinking <laughs> see again i agree with the belief but uh, making enlightenment a commodity is the premise but i think you have to go to the premise that why do people seek enlightenment and again who are the gurus who are selling it and how bad are they then the theologians theological people who are practicing their religion on their sleeves this lot of comparative thing because like for example your unpopular opinion that all the gurus should go to jail but what is the charge you'd put on them selling a product that does not exist illusion yeah but then what is buddhism he sold you a product it does exist one person has achieved it we are ready to al- believe that from different religions there are very different people who have achieved it but you are saying today's race is incapable of being enlightened are you saying that it cannot happen so that is a unpopular opinion the people alive today are incapable of enlightenment now go to the guru part of it but yeah it's an interesting premise people of today are they don't have a scope or chance to be enlightened and hence these gurus what are they even doing very interesting unpopular opinion yeah next uh, my opinion is that self help self help book sucks yeah. like in general those books yeah everybody um, who doesn't read self help books they have the same opinion of <laughs> fair enough ha yeah, i have read a few didn't work out for me because okay. as in not just me but the general age bracket that reads yeah. it the younger generation जनरेशन जनरल अभी उन लोग का प्रॉब्लम है कि मम्मी ग्यारह बजे घर पे बुला रही है हाउ विल दे रिलेट टू अ गाय हु इज राइटिंग अ बुक फ्रॉम अ न्यूयॉर्क मैं लाइक अ न्यूयॉर्क अपार्टमेंट हाउ विल दैट काइंड ऑफ हेल्प यू कनेक्ट हाँ ओके द अनपॉपुलर ओपिनियन हियर इज सेल्फ हेल्प बुक्स ओनली हेल्प द पर्सन हुज रिटन इट मे गोज आई हैव रिटन नो सेल्फ हेल्प बुक्स एंड आई हैव रेड फोर एंड आई हैव बिन हेल्प जीरो टाइम्स that can be a unpopular opinion uh, premise i have another one yeah, which sure. is uh, going viral doesn't always equal to success sorry sorry going going viral doesn't always mean uh, doesn't always lead great to success great opinion Haan. another 10 on 10 for going viral Haan. does not mean success because because <laughs> Be- yeah because abhi aryan khan bhi viral hai i don't see his career no, going no that was viral. a bad punch line but <laughs> Fair, fair enough <laughs> but i can see going viral not being because of the people going viral like one guy one guy i know went viral because somebody asked him ki aap kis ki sarkar mein ho he said main laudha ke sarkar mein ho <laughs> so yeah going viral didn't help him because he was reprimanded by his party everybody whenever they meet him they ask him are laudha ka sarkar laudha ka sarkar <laughs> so you can take an example like that and being like going viral may not always be prestigious for your family may not always make sense later he got elected also Lord i mean that is india but <laughs> <laughs> what can i do <laughs> come uh, uh my opinion is skinny people have no right to complain about body shaming skinny people have no right to complain about body shaming i don't think fat people also have a right to complain <laughs> about body shaming <laughs> they do but If that was your opinion that would be very difficult to justify fat people have no right to complain about body shaming you are going to skinny people of course they don't have any right to complain about no, body shaming but they are shaming. complaining in this time are they yeah where i have read articles where they are saying they are ridiculed yeah. because they are too skinny yes i know a person oh they are anorexic they are they are oh they are oh they are basically sick uh, they are not in good shape basically nahi nahi lukhe log bhi karte hai rote that's an unpopular opinion <laughs> lukhe log bhi karte hai <laughs> okay i got the i got the gist <laughs> lukhe log bhi karte hai great <laughs> what's your unpopular opinion okay so my unpopular opinion is no topic should be taboo for discussion 
no topic to no topic no should topic be taboo. should be taboo for discussion for discussion like for example if somebody is going to talk about vegetarianism i'm going to pound the fact that asparagus makes your pee smell or uh-huh. that daru is vegetarian so uh-huh. you got to accept that fact you just don't pound on the stupid aspect of it this is mainstream aspect correct yeah this is good enough you're not saying vegetarian should not live <laughs> no i don't mind <laughs> In case of emergency, the they are my like escape plan, you know. Oh, they in case of emergency, you will be like come for the vegetarian first, yeah. because they don't kill. <laughs> exactly. They are nice people. They'll give in to the. Yeah. Okay, vegetarianism sucks is also a premise. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I think fat shaming should be encouraged in, instead of. Uh, Depends. Instead of being frowned upon, it's Fat- unhealthy. Yeah, you should not be the person saying it though. <laughs> fat shaming see like i was 150 kg at one point and i have this joke in my set where i came down to 80 kg so from fat i was going to mad you know, that's one extreme where you just make friends who are fit and then they just tell you what is the best protein to have etc and i lost 75 kg and people always come to me and ask me how did you lose all that weight and i asked them have you tried a dietitian or Yoga or any gym or anything, and they said we've tried everything and it's not worked. And I said, then how will this conversation work? <laughs> how can I help you if nothing else has? So if it comes from, see, fat shaming is not. See, you are calling it fat shaming. That itself means that it cannot be defended. If it's intellect shaming, if it's telling a person, "Yar, don't eat through your emotions. If you have a scientific issue in your body." get tested and figure out if you have vitamin deficiency figure out if you are eating through your mental health figure out these are the informations that are there you don't need to land up at a mcdonald's every time you are emotional about something so that sort of a well rounded perspective was i'm not fat shaming my rich friend i'm just intellect shaming him no it comes from a place of concern like yeah concern but my family is fat but obese, then almost. talk about that yeah I don't know about you guys but I'm fat shaming the fuck out of my family because yeah, they have all... that's make it brother to work <laughs> So sure. I'm fat shaming through my I'm fat shaming my brother a lot because he has all the means to lose his weight but he's not doing it currently So that is sort of a thing where you are like fuck it's my problem I want to make my brother live longer he's not understanding it comes from a place of emotion it doesn't seem like an unpopular opinion so you go with that yeah last two of you guys yeah go okay so i think all comedians should have their own political party compulsorily i'll tell you why i'm saying this not because for money or position or both let's say you're doing a show and goons turn up they can't yeah. beat you up because audience will be apne gunde baithe hain andar so so you they can't put in jail so bro I, i have seen an audience disappear on a comedian <laughs> <laughs> like they were in a magic show <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you <laughs> how wrong you are of what you expect of audiences. <laughs> They have a job on Monday. What are you talking about? <laughs> They don't want to be ruffled up on Sunday. Yeah, last unpopular opinion for today. Okay, I think uh, rape is a very overhyped crime. Uh, Jermaine Greer said that, and she got oh, cancelled. Oh, okay, sure, but I don't have that kind of audience, so my yeah. unpopularity will kind of save me. So. till that time i will say it okay so yeah so, what your opinion is let so, me not interrupt you now yeah sure sure, sure. It, i didn't see it as an interruption so uh, rape is because i feel that you know death is far worse and people make lots of jokes about death and one can just imagine what it is dead and literally just imagine because mm-hmm. you don't know what happens after death mm-hmm. and i came up this realization that rape is an overhyped thing is when i was in the midst of kind of being raped so there was a man chasing me i locked the door he was banging the door and because i'm a very creative person the first thought that came to my mind is uh, why not rape okay so i just thought that uh, uh, you know probably i'll get pregnant mm, no but i can have i pill today so not a problem uh, then or maybe i will like you know or it will be really really painful so i'm thinking that you know but he's a bad guy and no one has proved that bad guys don't have good sex mm. so i'm saying i could just have good sex so uh, so i don't i did not see any reason why rape is over hyped like why it is over hyped and that is what my opinion yeah, is yeah i mean if you are a victim of the crime and you are making uh, parables towards that 
and it's totally justifiable and it's a very very unpopular yeah, and opinion and i want to land it at a point where saying you know a guy who meets an accident loses his leg who's dying has lost his life literally what have you lost when you get raped and that actually connects with people saying is that loot jayega and is that act- is actually nothing yeah honor lies in the actions of the rapist not in the victim of the rape exactly if you can derive that that's actually a 10 on 10 opinion for someone who's a victim and is going through to communicate about rape uh, in a very unique way so that it gets the man's attention and uh, in real life i beat the shit of the guys so. uh, yes of course it goes without saying <laughs> that's the popular thing to do <laughs> but thank you so much today we had so much fun tomorrow we are discussing the two most important parts of uh, oh your unpopular opinion is pending Still yeah go for it at some at some point in future we should remove all the domestic uh, boundaries all the country's domestic oh country uh, this has also been said by osho in 1982 uh, yeah i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> but that premise is an unpopular opinion in a conflict area so if there is a conflict area understanding of there being no any point and so again your unpopular opinion cannot be rooted in future if your unpopular opinion is rooted in future it's not going to have that much of impact it's unpopular today so you have to root your opinion in present times what she is saying about the subject what he is saying about save the tigers what he is saying about is all in the present tense so unpopular opinions there's another good thing we learn about unpopular opinions unpopular opinions are here and now cannot be in the future and cannot be in the past because then you are judging on a different lens it has to be rooted in today Okay so tomorrow what we're going to do in the class we're going to discuss the most uh, two of the most toughest aspects of comedy that comedians face and that I faced when uh, my video kind of went out and I had to do a one hour show when I didn't have a one hour ready the two of the most difficult things that a comedians who are past the barrier and when they are doing their own shows there are two things they face how to open a show and how to end a show these two things uh to be discussed tomorrow and we'll have a fun session main chahta hu ki aap sirf ek hi prarthana mein dhyan lagaye aur wo hai hansi kyunki jab aap hans rahe hote hain tab aap present moment mein hote hain aap future mein jaakar nahi hans sakte और आप पास्ट में जाकर नहीं हंस सकते